Tonight we're learning the CDC may soon drop its five-day isolation guidance for people with COVID-19. Now these changes could come as early as April. Joining us now to talk about those changes is Dr. William Singh from Kaiser Permanente. How are we doing today, Dr. Singh? Great, thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. So, okay, make this make sense for us because we know the five days are there to reduce the chances of spreading coronavirus to others, but we know the science itself has not changed. So could this actually increase COVID cases? And if so, does this mean that our bodies or even our society are more capable of withstanding the risk of a spread? Those are great questions. So number one, first of all, this is not for healthcare setting. This is for the community because we do have more vulnerable population within the hospital. However, CDC does plan to update its uh, new COVID guidelines. You know, the last time they did this was 2021 when they went from 10 days of isolation to five days of isolation. What this does is it moves it even more forward by looking at the science and looking at the data to say, what is the right thing to do now? We've been watching this virus very carefully for the last three, four years now. And right now is the time where the science shows that we do have enough immunity. There is a, a level of protection out there because people are vaccinated or they've been exposed to COVID. So they've developed that uh, protection. But Dr. Now, Singh, the, the, mm -hmm. the data that you're talking about, a lot of it comes from testing. And we know that testing is more expensive. It's harder to access than it used to be. So people may not even know they have COVID-19, let alone take the steps to isolate. What data, if any, do we have regarding whether or not Americans were actually even following the guidance? Um, well, we do have a lot of data in terms of exposure, right? We, we know that if you have COVID, um, we do have wastewater data to tell us what is the community transmission out there. So it is a, it's not a direct testing data, but it's a surrogate data to mark how badly is the transmission around the community. And if we have that data, we also have the data on what's the likelihood that you end up in a hospital or what's the likelihood, God forbid, that you die from this disease. We have that in comparison. So just for information, look, 2020, um, we were getting about, in, in 2021, we were getting about 26,000 deaths a week. Right now, we're getting about 700. Now, that's 700 too many, but that's 30 to 40 times less than it was in 2021. All right, I got about 10 seconds here. If the impacts of spreading COVID-19 are less consequential than they used to be and hospitals are no longer overwhelmed, even during these winter time uptakes, is it time to treat COVID-19 more like the flu? I think that's what they want to do. They want to treat it more like the flu or the RSV. And we this guideline brings it in line and aligned with the rest of the infections. But it is, it is time to move forward. Dr. William Singh from Kaiser Permanente, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you very much.